Lucy. All right, you are now reacting to the four member boy group. Oh, not boy group, excuse me. Korean band. They play their own instruments. Lucy, who were formed on a survival show called Super Band, in which they invited 121 musicians from street performers to classical musicians. Basically, the survival show's goal was to create a super band, and the top three groups formed and voted for would be able to sign to a label after winning. Lucy placed second and have been signed under Mystic Entertainment. Fun fact, the band is named after a dog that they used to play with that lived close to where they practiced. Oh, my bunny's name was Lucy. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so wholesome. On top of that, the member Guang Il also explained that Lucy comes from the Latin word lux, meaning, or sorry, lux, right? Lux. Meaning light. The song you're reacting to, Snooze, is about reminiscing on childhood memories and experiences while being an adult. They encourage their listeners to not feel pressured to act like an adult all the time. As one of my mentors said, you should always strive to be childlike, but not childish. Mm. There's oh. a big difference. The song is composed by <laughs> Lucy members. Yeah. Three, two, one. Clothes. Balin. Oh, nice. Flat six. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Kermit likes. Kermit the Frog oh. likes. Oh. Is that like marimba? I like the marimba sounding thing going on. A lot of subtle choices. I like how faint the percussion is. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that little guitar. Oh. He just want to play. Yeah. Woo! Man, the bass double. The six this string. This is such a feel good song. Is that a six string bass? Wow. Oh, this violin and bass are just... It's, it's just, it sounds so nice together. It blends very well. That oh my god. Voice. That violin, wow. I love the hand mutes with the playing in tandem with the violin. They ain't got guitar picks, yes. And there's like ambient kind of singing electric guitar too that makes it really nice in the back. Oh my gosh, going down the scale. <laughs> Pentatonics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, the bass, man, is so sick. What? That was really sick. Good vibe. Good vibe. Good vibes. You know why? The chords. The chords. Childhood. The chord progression. Bro. Right. I'll talk about this after because. Oh, 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 oh. Oh! Oh, this one. Oh, Try yeah. some sub. <laughs> now they're just taunting us. Whoa, that's so beautiful. Yeah. It really does feel like experiencing childhood. Yeah.
The chirp one. Mm. Yeah, give me that minimalism. Hey, that's tough. <laughs> Yo, those are some clean octaves, my boy. We just want to play with you. Oh. I was waiting for these smells to kick back. That was a really nice timing. Think of patient. Something about playing the Rhythm. same note fifty times. It just the intensity, just the intensity and the anticipation that it gives. It's just wow. I really like them. Oh, I love it. They managed to take like an alarm clock sound, something that inspires so much anxiety in me, and make it like cool. So yeah. good on that. I didn't even notice that, the alarm clock. They, they brought it back. Well, there was like the, the clear one and then it was kind of in the refrain like earlier where like you could just kind of hear it a little bit and I was like, interesting. I don't know, maybe I'm dumb, but like the form of this song was just kind of, cause every time there was like silence or there was space, I thought it was over, but then it wasn't over. And then like, you know, this, this violin dude just comes in the middle and just gives this whole like, presentation of the violin and that was just so beautiful and then like it stopped and then there's space I'm like okay it's done no but they, they gave us more and, um, I'm freaking out even more so sorry Jason <laughs> no it's okay it's just I can hear you screaming so it's like doggy doggy because it's like an echo I thought that's a perfect transition but to have the da -da 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 da 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 as as the ending it didn't really fit the vibe of the rest of the song. It, I liked it as a middle transition. Mm. Yeah, it's not like a climax. The fake ending. Yeah. Also because this is one case where like, I know the song is very much in B major, and I think going into the B minor, the minor at the end, I don't want the bittersweet this time. I just want the sweet. Because I feel like the lyrics are so sweet. And they can get that feeling, I think, better with the, the sort of with that, like getting the C sharp, Wait. and that's all one thing. I think I know what they're doing. So throughout the whole song, there was an alarm that was in the B note. And so at the end, when they hit the B over a thousand times, that's the they're alarm. Up. They're playing the alarm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be waking up yeah, from exactly. the sweet dream. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But reality. Oh, no. So the first they time snooze it happened. It. They snooze it. Yeah, they snooze <laughs> it. And then the next time, it actually has to yeah. wake up. <laughs> Vocally, what I was really drawn to was there was like this this breathiness to the sound that we kind of always talk about but the onsets were really clear and there was the one part where he's just kind of droning the one vowel over um a few measures and it was that's not easy to do like that was complete head voice with a crescendo with a day crescendo that takes a lot of vocal control i think there's a unique kind of freedom ah, just freedom there's a unique unique kind of elasticity I feel like you get to hear um, when each of the members are more intimately involved with the songwriting because I feel like a lot of that was probably improvised and then decided on for the piece, right? Especially a lot of the fills, a lot of the little drum fills they put in, the violin solo I'm sure they just kind of came up with and like, yeah, let's stick with that, sounds good. So there's that kind of flexibility that you you see really embellished in jazz music, but in this case, it's it's cleaned up to fit a pop structure that you don't get as much in, in other bigger groups and things that are produced by other people or written by other people. Oh, that's so good. Also, they are great musicians. I was like kind of looking at the violin a lot because- Yeah, we don't see that a lot in K-pop. We don't see that a lot and it like- Not like with I them actually playing it too. Yeah, I don't mean to be a dick when I say like a lot of the stuff that they were playing wasn't like super hard to play on violin, but it still sounded so nice with like, the they blend were, of really instruments really and like, yeah. And then they had like the little like metro filter on it with, it, that's not an actual 
name or anything. It's just like when you go into the metro and you hear like performers, or, like buskers just kind of playing in there and it's so like echoey and there's so much. Oh, like a subway. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, a metro, a subway, same thing. But it's like that, that sound is so open, it's like bouncing off the walls. I love that like little effect where you have like that much resonance going. So I wish it actually sounded like that when you like took your string instrument and went outside to play, it doesn't. And like, so that, that sound mixed with like the outdoors and like mm. pretty visuals. I'm like, this is so relaxing and such a feel good song. What, what emotion did it make you feel? Um, freedom. I think it's the, the, the video. The video. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I did feel that the video really like helped that music like come alive and mm. they worked together like really well yeah but thinking about how the music might represent that freedom aspect you know there was that big pause before that alarm mm. went off before that alarm they like totally switched up the feel if this is the regular time and then like when you when you double the speed that's a double time right like mm -hmm. speeding up but this one it when not speeding up, but like kind of backwards, mm. but not double, but like in the tr with a triplet subdivision. That was really cool. So maybe like, yeah, thinking about the freedom musically, it's the use of like subdivision and rhythmically. Yeah. I guess something that the not reminiscent, reminiscing chord progression, but a uh, sort of a chord progression that a lot of people use. I, the best example I can give, which is not a very good one, is in the Chainsmokers Made the Memories Do Not Open album. They use this chord motif a lot. I really love this chord progression, but when you have a uh, predominant, dominant, and then minor, and then back to the dominant, it first of all creates this idea, this sense of not nothing resolving, but it doesn't sound dissonant. So it, it kind of gives the ability to sort of feel like you're wandering in space rather than you're grounded and you're in the place that you are. You're floating in musical space. That's kind of the a a affect that creates that, so. Lots of fun. I liked it. I liked the violin um, as a really nice timbre, and I loved how, I didn't, it didn't even sound like a guitar. It sounded either the violin was doing pizzicato and they overlaid it with the, the arco, or the guitar did a hand mute sort of thing to be able to get that like, boom, 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 boom. You know, and the, the bass was great. I think it really, it almost felt like they took a lot of folk aspects, but it might, might just be the violin um, kind of bringing in that sound. The, but the, the bass had that kind of understatedness that really made the song nice, yeah. I think one of the things that makes this song so successful, it feels like when the song was written, they cared about how the violin will project with the overall sound of the band. That's why when it's when it, when it ended up being recorded, it sounds so nice. It's not just the sound engineer doing its mag his or her magic, their magic. No, it actually sounds good. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it started from the composition phase where they're like, okay, we have a violin here. We need to do something with the band and the drums, and so that it gets integrated very nicely. And I think it, it works very. Mm -hmm. And the sound injury didn't have to do that much work. The violinist was already good. I mean, you could tell with the actor. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 you know, oh, yeah. They, ba, da, da, with the da 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 mm -hmm. and going up in the octaves. Those were dead on, yeah, you know? Absolutely. You know, I feel like the way that they incorporated the violin into this was just very interesting. And it reminded me of the song Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fear. So I can definitely hear some type of like 80s. Um, influence in this. That could just be like a nod to, to the past, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Melodically, which I don't think it's a bad thing. No, I agree with you, Ju, but I also think too, just like the integration of the violin, and I think even in, in the studio class we had today, Ju, that just like, it, it's kind of like our job as classical musicians to um, make sure that people don't forget about the art. Exactly. And so that we can make people exactly. interested in classical music. Just kind of recognizing that it's mm -hmm. not just boring old people music, you know, and bring it into a younger generation. And I think, you know, like, of course it's wonderful. We perform and, you know, we have concerts and we have the New York Phil and all this stuff and mm -hmm. they do like new music, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's great. Personally, I believe that the, the best way in which we can, you know, bring classical music to younger minds and into the common ears by doing things like this, by bringing it mm -hmm. through um, exactly. pop culture and pop records. And I think they did a good job with it because mm -hmm. he's a proficient player 
and like mm -hmm. a lot of arpeggiations and scale work that he's doing was like nice and he has a very nice tone as well once this this is like sonically in like a younger generation's ears mm -hmm. they're gonna go hmm that sounds really wonderful maybe i want to pick up the violin and try and play mm -hmm. that or maybe i want to listen to something that sounds like that or has a similar instrument to that and then mm -hmm. that leads on a pathway of you know recognition of, of other art forms and creation and their own creation if they want to start playing you know mm -hmm. so that's why that's why i thought it was pretty inspiring Flashback. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, Mance plays violin! <laughs> I'm having an identity crisis right now! <laughs> <laughs>